jako świadek jutro wraz z innymi odpowie za wszystkie lajdactwa obozowych oprawców. Stopień wojskowy. Obersturmführer opowie nam o morderstwach, jakich dopuszczała się SS na terenie obozu. Am 21. oktober etwa da kam ein Transport von Warschau. Und dieser, äh, aus diesem Transport hat der Lager, erste Lagerarzt äh, Lanke die Leute aussortiert nach Arbeitsfähigkeit und Arbeitsunfähigkeit. Und an diesem Tag hat er ca. 500 Menschen herausgezogen. Und die wurden daher alle vergast. Darunter waren viele Frauen und Kinder. Powiada, że w październiku 1943 roku przybył na Majdanek transport więźniów. Z grupy tej lekarz wysegregował 500 osób jako niezdolnych do pracy. Wszystkich zagazowano i spalono. W tej liczbie dużo kobiet i dzieci. Takie historie zdarzały się na Majdanku codziennie. Nie wiadomo w jakim celu Terne zajmuje się wypadkiem tak mało jaskrawym. Mógłby raczej opowiedzieć o 3 listopada 1943 roku, kiedy na Majdanku rozstrzelano 18 400 osób. Ich bin kein Taktist. Ich habe keinen geschlagen, noch nie. Noch nie. On nie sedzi, to się nie dowoni ubił. Ich bin kein Taktist. Nein. Niemals. Noch nie Taktist gewesen. Kenn ich nicht. Ich bin viel zu fein. Ten esosowiec utrzymuje, że jest człowiekiem subtelnym. Osób, że znane wam są zasady prawa międzynarodowego? Ja, in Genf, nie war das kein kein äh, erschossen werden darf ein Gefangener, dass, dass die Adressen ausgetauscht werden, dass das Rote Kreuz, ein Flieger oder ein Schiff nicht beschossen werden darf. Das ist Genfer Konvention, nicht wahr? Świadek mówi, że zgodnie z konwencją genewską nie wolno źle traktować jeńców. Wróćmy wobec tego do dalszych zas... Inny zbrodniarz, Rotenführer SS Scholen. Ten człowiek obcęgami wyrywał więźniom złote zęby. Dziś zapewnia, że nie byłby w stanie skrzywdzić muchy. Przeklina Hitlera i SS, żeby wykazać swój poziom moralny. Opowiada wstrząsające historie z życia obozu. Posłuchajmy jednej z nich. Szolen opowiada o tym, jak był świadkiem zamordowania 150 dzieci. Anton Ternis from Trier. 52 years old, married, six children, certified accountant and bookkeeper by profession, as an SS company commander, the highest ranking SS officer captured at Madani. Sie müssen nur ein paar Fragen nur die Wahrheit erzählen. Jawohl, das bin ich als Offizier schuldig. Ternis, first lieutenant and company commander. You must tell the truth in answer to each question. Certainly, that is my duty as an officer. What gas was used to suffocate the people? This cyclone gas here. On what orders were people in this camp exterminated? I think the order came from above. From no one here has the power to simply decide that. That is what I assume you see. Do you think that you, as an SS officer who worked here in the camp, are responsible for these mass murders? No. It is known to us that Frenchmen, Belgians and Poles were also exterminated. Yes, Jews, I know, I have heard this. So, do the Germans disregard all the rules of warfare in this camp? The people were mostly Jews, they weren't prisoners of war. I am not a sadist. I didn't beat anyone, I never have. I'm not a sadist. I have never been a sadist. I am far too well educated for that. Too well educated. Tell that. Obersturmführer Ternis. Do you know Moosfeld? Describe him. Certainly. I know Moosfeld personally. Everyone who talked about him made him out to be a very fanatical and brutal person. His outward appearance was that of a human beast. He had a restless and unsettled manner, can't look you in the eye. Uh, a restless manner, you know? Not firm, changeable.
Theodore Schollen from Geldern, 42 years old, five children, as an SS corporal in Madanik, responsible for the store of personal effects. Your family name and your given name. Schollen, Theo, your rank, corporal. When did you become a member of the Nazi party? In 1937, when I was called up. When did you become an SS soldier? In 1937. At the press conference later, Sherlin tells that all orders came from Berlin. He says that he was shocked at first when he saw the gas chamber and the crematorium, particularly since 137 children were killed there one day. And he thought of his own children. But, as he says, he soon became used to it. It is impossible for the interpreter to translate the German words of extermination, such as final solution, special treatment, selection, gassing, lethal injection, block elder. What particular type of camp was it in your opinion? I assume that it was for the extermination of people. Did you see the mass murders? I didn't see any mass murder because I didn't have anything to do with the camp. I only saw people marching to the camp. Five thousand of them were women. Who sent the people in to be gassed? the doctors or the camp administration. Dr. Blanke and Dr. Rindfleisch. One time a trainload arrived and the ones unfit for work were separated out. About 500 were picked out. There were definitely orders from above. Were women gassed too? Women too? Yes. So that was the practice of German medicine. Especially those who were ill, right? Yes. What were the nationalities of those who were gassed? All nationalities. Belgians, Frenchmen, Poles, Greeks, Italians, almost all of them from Europe. Jews? Yes, Jews. Russians? Russians? Jews? Yes, Russian Jews. Not prisoners of war. That would be immoral. That goes against international law. That goes against everything. Kriegsgefangene, Kriegsgefangene nicht, das verstößt gegen die guten Sitten, das ist gegen das Völkerrecht, das ist gegen alles.